That's just really loud. Okay, let me test. Say, where is it? Ah. Test, test. All right, let's share the screen. There we go. So if, if you notice me looking at the screen and I look like a crackhead is because after church when we got home, I was so exhausted and I did not sleep well last night. My cats kept messing with me all night last night. For some reason, they decided to come in the room to do all their scratching and playing and everything else. And and all that, that cooking I did yesterday, that just kind of really kicked my butt. So I laid down to take a nap. I was just going to take like an hour nap because I had full intentions of cleaning the pool, get ready to put, take it down and put it away for the season. I didn't wake up till like 30. So I'm still kind of waking up. So right now my eyes are just like wide open. I always look like this when I first wake up. It's like crazy, crazy eyes. So I promise you I'm not on drugs. <laughs> anyway, they, welcome to October 1st. Um, yeah, Dr. Madison was supposed to test my potassium uh, the other day when I went, and he didn't, and I really wished he had, because I, I swear I think it's still low. He's just in such a hurry just to get us in and out. You know, someone in one of my end-time studies had talked about how these days doctors, and no offense, Tanny, I'm not talking about you, present company accepted, you know, it's not included in this, but a lot of doctors are just wanting to treat the symptoms rather than the underlying cause. And that's all he's doing. He's not trying to find out why all of a sudden my body can't keep potassium, you know, because I eat potassium enriched foods. So there's no reason. Even when I was taking four 20 MQ ER, uh, 20 MQ is, oh, I don't know what it is, but it's extended release tablets. I was taking four of them a day, which is quite a bit of potassium. And I've been taking it for three weeks and my and eating like avocados. And, and I mean, uh, precious sister Julia at church had given me a list. Of, oh gosh, it must be at least five or six pages long of potassium enriched foods. So I've been making sure that I've been eating potassium enriched foods, you know, foods that I wouldn't even normally eat. I've been making sure I eat them uh, just to add it to my diet, just to make sure I'm getting plenty of potassium. And even after three weeks, it was still low. So... <laughs> And he didn't test it, so I don't know. Maybe that's why I was sleeping so much today. But anyway, that's not what this is about. Sorry. <laughs> and so anyway, October 1st. And as always, I'm late again. Let me take this down. I don't want to look at myself. Go away. Hi. There we go. All right. So today's insight reading is Genesis 1:14 through 23. And then our Bible in the year reading is Isaiah 11 through 13 and Ephesians 4. And so, Father, as we get into your word tonight, Lord, I ask that you bless us with your word. Speak to our hearts and speak to our minds, Father. Just enlighten us with knowledge, wisdom, discernment, and understanding. Help us to grow in our walk with you and our relationship with you, Father grow the desire and the yearning that we have to be fed by your word father so that we can fill up on your word and then empty ourselves out to those that need to hear the good news we pray this in jesus holy name amen okay then god said let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. 
So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the mornings were the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. Right there, that disproves evolution theory. Just saying. <laughs> Sorry, I digress. Um, why are you, no one asked for you, get out of here. <laughs> And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So apes are made from its kind. Monkeys are made from its kind. If we evolved from apes, why do we not see different stages of evolved apes from there to where we are now? Why are there not more skeletons and more obvious evolution from this to that, what we are now, found? Because they built a whole person out of a tooth for their evolution theory. Uh, I remember being taught that in school, evolution theory. So glad I was raised in the church by the Gibsons. My parents didn't attend, but the Gibsons took me. So I knew better. I knew better. Anyway, so the story for today is Elegant Design. An international research team has created a flapping wing drone that mimics the movements of a particular bird, the swift. Swifts can fly up to 90 miles per hour and are able to hover, plunge, turn quickly, and stop suddenly. Wow, never heard of them. The ornithopter drone, however, is still inferior to the bird. One researcher said birds have multiple sets of muscles which enable them to fly incredibly fast, fold their wings, twist, open feather slots, and save energy. He admitted that his team's efforts were still only able to replicate about 10% of biological flight. God has given the creatures in our world all kinds of amazing abilities. Observing them and reflecting on their know-how can be a source of wisdom for us. The ants teach us about gathering resources. Rock badgers show us the value of dependable shelter. And locusts teach us their strength in numbers. That's in Proverbs 30, verses 25 through 27. The Bible tells us that God founded the world by his wisdom, Jeremiah 10, 12. And at the end of each step in the creation process, he confirmed that what he'd done was good. Genesis 1, 4, 10, 12, 18, 21, 25, and 31. The same God who created birds to fly above the earth across the vault of the sky, verse 20, has given us the ability to combine his wisdom with our own reasoning. Today, consider how you might learn from his elegant designs in the natural world. And that was written by Jennifer Benson Schultz. What part of God's creation do you admire the most? How does it speak to you about his wisdom? Heavenly Father, open our eyes to your wisdom as we consider your creation. Amen. Okay, we're going to start in Isaiah. 11 through 13. I'm not going to try to say it the Hebrew way because I had never heard that before. <laughs> um, I forgot the New King James Version now. It's all good. The reign of Jesse's offspring. Gee, I, I wonder who that might be. Is that the forgotten one? Just the boy out in the field tending to the sheep? <laughs> yeah. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. 
The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Oh, I cannot wait till one word. And Satan is through. Bam. Over. Luciferians think that they actually have a chance against Jesus when he returns. They're building up the Luciferian army because Satan has them convinced they actually have a chance, even though Satan is pretty sad. Anyway, righteousness shall be the belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his waist. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall each shall play by the cobra's hole. And the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a shall seek him. And his resting place shall be glorious. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of Egypt from Pathros and Cush, from Elam and Shinar, from Hamath and the islands of the sea. He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed. Also the envy of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah but they shall fly down upon the shoulder of the Philistines toward the west. Together they shall plunder the people of the east. They shall lay their hand on Edom and Moab, and the people of Ammon shall obey them. The Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt. With his mighty wind, he will shake his fist over the river and strike it in the seven streams and make men cross over dry shod. There will be a highway for the remnant of his people, who will be left from Assyria as it was for Israel in the day that he came up from the land of Egypt. Isaiah 12, a hymn of praise. And in that day you will say, O Lord, I will praise you. Though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day, you will say, praise the Lord, call upon his name. Declare his deeds among the peoples. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, O inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. Isaiah 13, proclamation against Babylon. The burden against Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, I meant to look that up, Amos saw, lift up a banner on the high mountains, raise your voice to them, Wave your hand that they may enter the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my multitude. This is the one I really like because it makes it easy. It's almost. See, I would have not, I would have thought that the O would have been pronounced different. Sorry. Okay. And I really did mean to look that up. Would you stop popping up there? Hide it. Thank you. The Lord of hosts musters the army for battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. The Lord in his weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. Wail, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands will be limp. Every man's heart will melt, and they will be afraid. Pangs and sorrows will take hold of them. 
They will be in pain as a woman in childbirth. They will be amazed at one another. Their faces will be like flames. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, with both wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he will destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will halt the arrogance of the proud and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a mortal more rare than fine gold, a man more than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth will move out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. It shall be as the hunted gazelle and as a sheep that no man takes up, every man will turn to his own people and everyone will flee to his own land. Everyone who is found will be thrust through and everyone who is captured will fall by the sword. Their children also will be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be plundered and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them who will not regard silver. And as for gold, they will not delight in it. Also, their bows, bows will dash the young men to pieces and they will have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eye will not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' pride, will be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It will never be inhabited. Nor will it be settled from generation to generation. Nor will the Arabian pitch tents there. Nor will the shepherds make their sheepfolds there. But wild beasts of the desert will lie there and their houses will be full of owls. Ostriches will dwell there, and wild goats will caper there. The hyenas will howl in their citadels, and jackals in their pleasant palaces. Her time is near to come, and her days will not be prolonged. Ephesians 4, Walk in Unity. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Spiritual gifts. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Oops. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth of love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Then amen. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord 
that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Do not grieve the spirit. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole still no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. It looks like that's the end of the document. Okay. So that's, that's some, that, those last few verses there, I have to really meditate on that because I have a very bad temper still, even though I try to control it. And sometimes I let my tongue get away with me. And I've been really battling a lot of spiritual battles with Satan lately. And he's just knows, he knows the things to do. And he's using people to really get to me, to really get my goat, as my dad used to say. And I, I have to really, really start staying more focused on God and not allow Satan to steal my joy. Because <clears throat> we are, we do not battle against flesh and blood. We battle against principalities. Amen. And right now, this spiritual warfare is so high because Satan knows his time is short. Because Jesus could come anytime. I mean, if you just if if you are a follower of end time studies or eschatology, same thing, and Bible prophecy and this thing, you would know just how soon Jesus is coming. I mean, it's just so close with everything going on over in the Middle East and Israel and all that. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. It always gives us encouragement and hope and joy and peace and, and just fills us with the, the void that's in our life that we were born with. Only you can fill. And it gives us joy unspeakable, Lord, that nothing could ever match. And I thank you, Father, that you're always willing to be there and that when we're in your word and we're reading your word, that you're there with us and that we can feel your presence with us when we're reading and and hearing and or even being taught your word because you, in your word i know it says where two or three are gathered there you are also and father i thank you but i know even when i'm by myself talking to you father i can feel your presence because i can feel the warmth but it's not to make me it doesn't make me get too warm it's it's a pleasant loving feeling of warmth this i don't know how to describe it but i know you're there I know you're there and I thank you that you're always with us and that you promised you would never leave us nor forsake us. And father, there were prayer requests today. It's written in my notebook far away. Uh, you know what the needs are, father, you know what the prayer requests were. And I just ask and thank you in advance, father, that you did hear the prayers of your children and that you're moving widely and speedily on those. And I pray your perfect will be done father. And that, that those that need a supernatural healing father, that, that is your will to be done. And we, I pray that anyone that listens to this reading or follows my videos or even those that get into your word today, Father, that were in your house, I'd ask that you put a double portion of blessing on them, Lord. And those that couldn't make it to your house today, Father, I just ask that you hug them, hold them in your arms and love on them, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
hope y'all have a blessed rest of your evening well it's most people are probably in bed by now i'm actually a night owl so it's my night's just starting um, and just know that jesus loves you i love you and know that there's never a pit too deep that jesus can't put your heart and knocks if a man hears his voice and opens the door he'll come in and in with you and with him he just waits he's patient he's a gentleman he's not going to force himself on you but just please just don't let satan lie to you and tell you you have plenty of time because we have no promise of tomorrow so please reach out to him today have a blessed night bye-bye